Today we're interviewing a man who's making a very difficult transition from sporting legend to political leader. Personally very gratified and excited to have in the 10 questions chair, Mr. Imran Khan. Welcome. Thank you. In your new book, Pakistan, you talk about how you were raised with English traditions and you went to English schools and you went to Oxford and you had to come to know and love your country after that. Uh, how do you answer people who say that that shift is just one of political expediency? Um, well, you know, uh, the, the great leaders of the subcontinent, uh, Gandhi in India and Nehru in India, who were the great Indian leaders, and then Jinnah in Pakistan, uh, who was our great leader, and then the ideological father of Pakistan, who's uh, the great Iqbal. Um, all of them actually w went through a similar experience. They, they went out of... Uh, the Indian subcontinent, got Western education, and then began to look upon their own societies differently. And they all took part in freedom struggles. Uh, in my case, uh, it, was the, uh, it was compounded by the fact that I was a cricket player who represented my country. The, the book also traces an interesting arc of your kind of religious faith. And, you know, as Australian growing up, uh, you know, you were regarded as something of a playboy, as I recall, among the Pakistani team. Uh, your book seems to paint a different picture of yourself. Did you have uh, some kind of a, an awakening, an epiphany, an experience that led to that? It doesn't mean that, you know, I, there was some uh, regret or anything of my past life. I mean, we evolve, we human beings. We are humans, otherwise we'd be made angels. So we make mistakes, we learn, we evolve. But it's specifically what is spirituality? It is much bigger thing than just about you know a playboy life or not. It is about lead, a spiritual life is different to a material life if there are two extremes, in that you have a as a spiritual person you have a responsibility to the society. You become selfless. There is a purpose to existence because you know that uh, the two main questions are answered: What are you doing on this earth, and what will happen to you after you die? So only. A religion can answer that. You have a heroic status as, as a cricketer. There are very few sporting figures that have quite your uh, resume. There's some Australians maybe, but um, <laughs> that sporting prowess has not yet translated into a lot of political success. Why do you feel that is? My, the reason I went into politics was not to just be successful as a politician and be in power. I want, I want a change in Pakistan. We wanted to get rid of the system, which is stopping the potential of the country going up. In other words, we are, are, the whole idea was to fight the political mafias in Pakistan. The two main parties are basically, their interests are the same, they are mafias. They come into power, they plunder the country, they all, both the leaders of the two main parties have their wealth lying outside, billions of dollars lying outside, all unaccounted for. And then they come in and they have only two reasons. One is to make more money and other is to protect their looted wealth. So it was taking on the whole political lot. And it was always going to be difficult. But having said that, each month the lead grows b between us and the number two party. Do you have confidence that cricket in Pakistan is clean at the moment? Well, let's, you know, let's put things in perspective. The, the patron of the cricket, uh, cricket board is none other than Asif Zardari, known as, as you know, uh, all over the world as Mr. 10%. So you can't blame the poor cricketers if that's their role model. I don't think uh, Pakistan cricket has, uh, has been clean, but I think that uh, international cricket has not really been clean. It's almost impossible to detect spot fixing. It's almost impossible. But you can only, if you monitor the players' bank accounts, that's one way of uh, getting around this because there's so much money in it. There's so much gambling in cricket right now that you, know, you can't really expect uh, the lure of, um, of money, which, obviously, which is actually, cricket is get, there's more money in cricket than ever in history. The IPL, just to give you an idea, I played 21 years of international cricket, which is one of the longest playing cricket. I want numbers here, right? No, I'm saying 21 years. I, in, in, in two months, a player makes more money than I did in 21 years of international cricket. And an ordinary test cricketer. Forget about, a, uh, I'm not talking about a Sachin Tendulkar. So that's the sort of money there is in cricket. You, um, you write in the book how uh, your wife Jemima 
found it difficult to live in Pakistan and that contributed to the demise of your marriage and you remain single. Is there going to be another Mrs. Imran Khan? I do not have uh, time to give to marriage because at the moment there's so much happening and spe especially now the party taking off. Uh, I just, uh, you know, right now my my main goal are the elections, which will be sometimes next year. So what you're saying is you think you'll have a better chance of meeting women once you're elected? <laughs> like Nicolas Sarkozy. Is that right? Is that the model we're going for? <laughs> no, not really. I, I, whatever my model, Sarkozy is not my model. <laughs> okay. Mr. Imran Khan, it's been such a pleasure. Thank Thanks you. so much. Thank you.